Welcome to one-on-one -on -one notary coaching with me, Mark Wills, with the loan signing system where I teach signing agents how to make amazing money in the loan signing agent industry. So happy that you're here. If you're watching this on replay, realize that I go live every single Monday. I try to do noon on Mondays on Instagram, but blog into my Instagram every single Monday and I go live where I help signing agents with one-on-one -on -one coaching. And you can always have the opportunity to speak directly with me and ask me anything that I can do to help you grow your business. These are always reposted on all of my channels, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. So make sure you watch all these. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Let's go! So glad you're here. So, if you're watching this live, this is how it works. You can just put your little ad camera button right there, and I'm going to go on with you live, and you can ask me anything that to do to help you grow your signing agent business. It is a first come, first serve, um, but I just simply answer any problems that you have. So, make sure you hit uh, this um Add camera button and I'll get you on. Um, so how this works is very simple. You have any questions, I have answers. So glad that you're here. So without further ado, somebody log on. Uh, as of right now, there is nobody who wants any notary coaching. So simply log on right here. Um, so if there's, oh, we got someone on right now. Let's do this. Um, all right, me live. Make sure your Wi-Fi connection is good. And then make sure that you're in a safe place. Please, no driving or at least pull over. Uh, oh, gosh. What's up? Hi, Mark. Hi. First off, tell me you are not driving, please. Of course I'm driving. Oh, girl, I need you to pull over, man. I'm on the highway from Arizona to California. I can't pull over on the highway. Okay, so, so what I'm going to say at the least, don't look at me. Okay. Look at the road okay. and just tell me what I can do for you. So, okay. what, uh, so can I, ask I you? just, I just. Um, started uploading everything to signing services and one of the signing services actually has is my friend and you know she asked me well what are the areas that you want to give you know that you want to uh, serve in and I told her you know like East LA County Orange County Riverside County and San Bernardino County and she says that I should only accept signings within 15 or 20 minutes to my home and I just feel like because I sign in the evenings and on weekends that I I could manage going a little farther than that what is your advice uh, my advice is everybody runs your business differently what my best advice here is you have to cut out the chatter and figure out what's best for your business. And so okay. I actually think this is a bigger macro coaching moment than trying to speak directly to your friend who owns a signing service. Everyone's always going to think they know what's best for you and your business. It's your job to figure out what you believe is best for your business. And look, here's the honest truth. Sometimes you don't know what's best for your business until you make a mistake or until you've spread yourself too thin. But you can't learn that by actually not pushing yourself. Does that make sense? So yeah. My, my bigger coaching isn't speaking directly to your friend. It's a macro coaching of you're listening to too many people. Who you need to listen to is you. Does that make sense? And look, yes. part of building a business is making mistakes, right? If yeah. you're not making mistakes, you're not growing. You're not trying. You're not pushing the boundaries. And you can never be something without pushing the boundaries. So what I would tell you is take everything until taking something to San, Ber uh, San uh, Bernardino was just too far. You're like, well, I'm not doing that again. And yeah. now you know, you know what I mean? But what I don't want you to do is assume something works or not works, and then you're shooting your business and the revenue in the foot. Does that make sense? Yes. And I know that as a winner, winners know that sometimes they lose. So That's my girl. In San Bernardino uh, County, like you're breaking up I on feel the highway. like I could, I could manage safe. East LA. I appreciate you. And hit me on the DMs, okay? Um, oh my gosh. So look, here is my, my biggest takeaway. And I think my biggest takeaway is, you know, we have to understand that part of building a business is us falling down. I think too many times we worry about tripping than worry about growing or worry about running too fast. I need you to just to figure out on the fly what works. That's called running a business. Everyone who plays it safe never grows. That's everyone who plays it safe never grows. And part of a building a signing agent business is taking risks and seeing and pushing the boundary and see what we're capable of. Don't listen to the outside chatter. Listen to what's in here and build a business. Let's go. What a great call number one. Um, let's get someone else on. I think family first notaries was second. Um, I do this in first come, first serve. So glad you're here today. We're doing a little bit later today because I was out networking at a mastermind myself. Oh, what's up? Hey, Mark. How, How you doing? You? How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> okay, cool. T tell everybody where you're from and that's going to I'm in Ohio. 
Okay, I'm in Cuyahoga cool. Falls, Ohio. Let's do it. Let's do it, girl. Because coach, just talk to me. So I got a question. I wanted to add a pastio to my business, right. but I'm not for sure if I just want to confirm. I do like. Do I have to take a course for that? I know, like training wise, to show me how to do it. But is it like a course like you do with loan signing agent? Yeah. Well, well, actually, so here's a very transparent answer. I don't do general notary work. However, here's what I will tell you is just like being a notary, there's no nothing you need, excuse me, just like being a signing agent, there's nothing you need outside of a notary commission. So whether you marry people as a notary, whether you do I-9 forms as a notary, whether you're doing apostilles, your job is to be a notary club from your state and then take the appropriate training so you know what you're doing. But there's not a certificate that says, yeah. okay, you can do apostilles, right? So my point is, is, I would recommend just like being a loan signing agent, get some type of training. But no, to answer your question, there's not a specific certification or degree that you need outside of simply not your, your notary commission from your state. Okay, thank cool. you so much. All right, easy peasy, girl. Let's get this party going. <laughs> I'll talk to you next time. That was an easy All right. One. Yeah, here's my, you know, kind of taking that takeaway from the conversation with her is, you know, just like being a notary signing agent, you actually don't need my course. <clears throat> I bet you didn't think that I would say that. What you need is training from your state. So what you got to do is go to your state, Secretary of State, and then let them know what you want to do as a notary public and ask them if any extra certifications or degrees are needed to do that part of your notary work. Again, always follow your state laws, but nine out of 10 times, chances are you need nothing but your notary commission. And then you need to learn how to do that specific niche within being a notary public. So always follow your state laws, but nine out of 10, just having a notary commission allows you to do the different aspects a notary has, but you should have training in that just like being a signing agent. Okay, cool. So let's go to, um, who was next on here? Uh, let's go Kia. I'm going simply in order as you hit, uh, um, invited yourself on. For you watching this brand new, my name is Mark Wills. I teach you, oh, what up girl? Hi, hi, how are you? I am so good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you so much for asking. My name is Kia, I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> Just got my notary commission in the mail this weekend, woohoo! Yeah. I'm so excited, Mark, I'm going to launch myself. Um, and I just wanted to reach out to you and know what's been working as far as marketing goes. Are you still, are you doing those quote unquote, like cold calls going in, you know, just without announcing to escrow companies, loan officers, what are you doing? What is working right now? Cool. So are you a loan signing system student? Yes. Okay. Then everything in the course works, girl. I okay. Don't, don't overthink it. But what I will tell you is this, right? You know, I, I what I can tell you in a five minute coaching call doesn't, take place of what's in the course. So my, my point is slow as a speed, go back in, you know, the first steps to register for all the databases in the course that I teach you, snap doc, signing order, notary, rotary, all those. And then the next step to go into all the signing service list, the 300 that I give you, the third, the, then the third step would be remember the scripts and then do everything else I tell you. So here's what I'm gonna tell you though, okay? I don't teach cold calling inside the course. Here's why. You know, so much, you have a beautiful smile, first off. People need to see that, girl, <laughs> right? When, when you're talking on the phone, they can't feel your energy. Like right now, I feel you. Like your spirit's amazing. Your smile is beautiful. Like that's 75% of getting business. 25% is what I teach you to say via the scripts, right? You're asking someone to allow you to represent them at the closing table, right? There's an escrow officer, a lender. They need to know that you that you're amazing, right? And the way they know that's by seeing you and feeling your energy. And then by the 25% is what I teach you to say. You remember, you got to make sure they understand that you know what you're doing. You know all the documents, everything in the script. But don't cold call because calling call is going to get you a very lower a closing ratio. Because again, they don't know what you look like. They don't know your energy. They don't know what you bring to the table. You, are, you could be calling from Ohio, right. right? So what works is what I teach. And, and, and here's the honest truth, though. You ready? The honest truth is 90% of the reason, 80% of the reason students get business direct is because they walk in the front door. You got to understand this. You ready? 80% of signing agents get into this business for the text messages. They're like, Mark, I can answer a text and get business. I'm like, yeah. So most of them don't want to walk 
to, into a title office. Most of them don't want to walk into a networking event. Most don't want to walk into an open house. So I can get you to push past your nerves and remember why you're building this business. You're going to be like, man, Mark is really accurate. And we said no other signing agents walk in these title companies because the truth is, it's not what I say. It's what I teach you to say. It's you. Like most signing agents don't walk in. Let me give you an example. You, you led this conversation with Mark. Should I cold call? All that tells me is a signing agent who isn't really willing to push through her nerves yet. You're not the only person though. So most people want a cold call instead of, instead, instead of walking in. And that's why it's so easy to build this business. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So don't overthink it. You're amazing. You have the best training on the planet. You have the beautiful smile. You got to show that girl, believe in yourself. Cause remember, we watch people sign their name a hundred times. Don't overthink what we do. Some of our best students are in Vegas. Ashley Bolden, Falcon Horowitz, Liz Galvin. Like there's so much great signing agents. So that leads me to my third point or like 25th point is network with some of the amazing LSS students out there. You know what I mean? Like don't be afraid to reach out to Liz. Liz is so freaking nice. And she's doing like 15,000 bucks a month. Like be like, girl, can I take you out to coffee? Can I beat your brain? bring value to her and figure out if you somehow can do something nice enough to where she actually might meet you on a Saturday at a coffee shop, right? So network with the LSS families. Don't overthink this business. Go out, push past your nerves, girl. You got this, okay? Oh, yes. um, let me end with this coaching. You ready? You might not want to hear this, okay? But your nerves will never go away. Successful people understand that you got to get through the nerves. Too many people wait for the nerves to disappear. And guess what happens? They don't market direct. And so, you know, the biggest thing that I get from signing agents, students that are successful, the biggest regret is the biggest regret successful signing agents say to me is I wish I went direct sooner. And all that tells me though, what I run, I'm really reading into that is a signing agent who waited for the nerves to go away. When you can accept that you're never gonna be nervous, and when you can accept that but success is on the other side of your fear, that's when life and this business just opens up, girl. So look, I know the first one's gonna be a little scary, but just I'm there with you in spirit, okay? Yeah. You, 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 your first one, you might bumble your words, that's okay. <laughs> you're gonna get better on the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. But most people aren't willing to go through number one and number two to get to number five. Does that make sense? And that's what separates successful people and unsuccessful people is successful people are willing to do it scared. They're willing to do it uncomfortable. They're brave enough to suck at something new. Girl, you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm brave. I'm ready. I'm going to get out there. Um, I'm excited. I am taking this on full time. I'm leaving my job behind and, you know, I'm just willing to take that risk now. So scared can't be in my vocab right now. I got you, Mark. You'll be seeing me soon. I'll be seeing you soon. Let's go. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I mean, look, you know, I, I, my biggest takeaway from Kia's conversation is, you know, the successful signing agents understand that there's a learning curve. Too many times in my experience of teaching signing agents for five years is that so many signing agents want to be good at something they've never done. Let me say that one more time. So many signing agents want to be good at something they've never done. Successful signing agents understand that you can't be good at something you've never done. So you know what they do? They do. They do it. That's it. You might not be the best the first time you do something. And that's okay. You got to embrace that. Embrace the learning curve. When I say successful signing agents are brave enough to suck, what I'm really saying is that signing, successful signing agents embrace the learning curve. They go, good, I might not be good first time. I may, I'll get a little bit better the second time. I'll get a little bit better the third time. And by the time the fifth time rolls around, they're like, yo, it's easy now. But a lot of people won't go through the hard to get to the easy. You got this key. I'm rooting for you, girl. Let's go. All right, who's up next? So excited to be on here with everybody. Just going in order in which people jumped on. Uh, Shonda, Christine, Stephanie, and Adrian. Those are my next four. Um, let's get this. Who is up next? Ashonda, I'm trying to get you on, girl. Um, okay. Oh, Shonda, what's up? Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So I have a few, few little questions. Okay. First off, so, we're going to start with where you're from. 
I'm from Michigan. Cool. Maria, um, from Michigan. Awesome. Okay. Now pretty I'm much in the Detroit, Detroit metro area. Perfect. Um, in November, I was just really starting to get off into my loan signing career, and my whole house got COVID. Mm. It is totally scared me from going into people's houses. I still possibly want to do that, but I really want to go more into the rhyme field. And it's a little bit more tedious to me trying to get the licensing and all of those things in order. Um, and then I was also kind of confused. Well, once you start the business, so many weird companies come out of the woodwork and want you to sign with them. You have no idea if these companies are actual legit companies or not. Um, so those are my two things. Like, how do you decipher which of the companies are real companies? And then stepping into the arena where you're doing more Ron or more um, virtual slash you know, yep. hard signing type thing. How do you, how do you do that? Yeah. I, first and foremost, I want to hear and, and, and empathize with your concerns. I understand that going in to other people's homes in this time, it, it could be making some people uneasy, completely feel you on that. Um, you know, what I will say is if you choose that route, you, you have the every right and frankly should, you can wear gloves, face masks, face shields, do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Ultimately, the bar will respect that because you're trying to protect them as well. So, you know, don't think that you can't wear gloves. Don't think that you can't wear a face shield. Don't think you can't wear a mask. Um, so, okay. you know, you can be as comfortable as you want in front of somebody else as well. So the only thing you can't do is make them sign somewhere they don't want to sign. And which means like you can't make them sign outside if they don't want to, if they don't ask or make them sign somewhere other than what they, um, that they requested. So, but outside of that girl, you can walk in like you want, you know what I mean? So I just want to okay. make sure I communicate that with you as a new signing agent. Uh, number two, I, I got good and bad news with Ron. I mean, here's a fact. Are you, are you a loan signing system student? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, you know, what I t teach all your students is when Ron makes the big pivot, I'll teach it. Unfortunately, okay. Ron hasn't pivoted that way. What I want you to understand is because states allow Ron does not mean lenders do. That's the biggest okay. misnomer. And it actually gets me a little frustrated because I see so many Ron training courses kind of preying on notaries. It, the, the fact of the matter is general notary work is on Ron. But until you see Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase all accept Ron, which then there really isn't much business out there for you. Right now, the only ones prevalent doing is Amrock. You're still working through a signing service. There's not much opportunity for $150 a closing. And so right. when Ron is hits us hard, I will let you know, and I'll be the first to help you make that pivot. But right now, I hate to tell you the truth, which is Ron is not taking over this side of the industry. Now, may it? 100% it may. And when it does, you are paying me to coach you through this entire journey. And I will, I take that serious and I will help you. Because keep in mind, okay. Remember, I have a signing service. The reason you take my course is because you're learning from someone who has a million dollar year signing service. So when my business is affected by Ron, I will have to figure out how to pivot. And once I do, I'll teach you. And I won't charge anything more for that. You know that. So um, what I would hate for you to do is bang your head against the wall to try to figure out remote online notaries when there's not a ton of money in it right now. Now, that doesn't that mean that there's I mean, that here... The bigger, the bigger um, company is Amrock, right. and they do some type of um, half virtual. Yeah, that's called a hybrid. So they do a hybrid, hybrid, but the hybrid right. signing still is still in paper. So there's okay. half on the all, all over the like a docu sign for lack of a better word. Right, and then, right. But keep in mind, Amrock is based out of Detroit, and so in Michigan yeah. it's huge. For everyone else, I wouldn't think about that. But right now, what I would do is just. Focus on the in-person. We have, are you in the Michigan group? We have uh, El Rico, yeah, who's yeah. an ambassador in Kalamazoo. You know, he's doing six figures last, last year, all with the, with the majority of the signings, which is paper and in, in-person. Um, okay. But when the time is to pivot, I will let you know. Um, but okay. that doesn't mean that I don't empathize with your concerns, because um, I feel you on that. And, and you, so I think maybe the answer is really figuring out how you can take the best precautions before you go in. Uh, wearing a yeah. face shield is completely acceptable. Uh, wearing a mask and a face shield, completely acceptable. Wearing, wearing uh, uh, gloves and using one-time pens, completely acceptable. So do whatever okay. you feel is necessary. And when the time is to pivot, I got you. Okay. All right, girl. Hey, stay safe. I'm with you every step of Thank the way, you. all right? All right, have Let's a good go. one. Uh, my biggest takeaway from that conversation is 
you know, remote online notaries is approved in almost all 50 states. By the way, California's coming at the end of next year is what, at the end of this year, excuse me, is what I've been reading. But because California accepts Ron doesn't mean Wells Fargo does. And that's the biggest, the, the, the biggest thing you need to understand. And it's the difference of that because your state allows Ron doesn't mean Wells Fargo does. And when the day Wells Fargo accepted or Bank of America or Chase, I will coach it. And if you're an LSS student, I will do it for free. I don't take it lightly. You've paid me money. So I will coach you. But in, this, in, me, in the interim, until Wells Fargo accepts remote online notaries, stick with the way that I teach you. Stick with the way that 90% of signing agents are making money. So remember, because signing, because states allow Ron does not mean lenders do. That's the big distinction you got to understand. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go to the next in line, which is Adrian, Christine, and then Stephanie, and then Sandy. So Adrian, you are up. Um, for those joining me, thank you first and foremost. My name is Mark Wills. Like, who is this guy? I teach notaries how to make money as signing agent. Oh, what's up? Hi. How Hi, everyone. You? Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Of course. So my name is Adrian, and I'm from New Jersey. Cool. Um, so this Friday, I decided that I was going to go direct. So on Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, I popped in at two open houses. Saturday, I know, I was so nervous. <laughs> and you did it, Ella, I you did were so it. nervous, and you did it anyways, and that is why you deserve your flowers. Thank you. So Saturday, um, I don't even think I was talking English, but I got some <laughs> words out. <laughs> and I got a business card this Sunday, um, I was pumped. I was like, okay, I did it once, I could do it again. So I, I went into another open house on um, Sunday, dropped off more waters and cookies, got more business cards, talked a little more. Um, so I emailed this morning saying, hey, you know, nice to meet you, all that good stuff. Should I be following up weekly because I didn't hear anything or yes. what should I do? Okay, first off, I am so, if I can give you a hug, I'm giving you a hug Thank right you. now. Thank so <laughs> you. So many you. people won't do it scared, okay? And you did. So please give yourself a pat on the back, like, Thank you, because that's the best way to get better at something. Uh, number two, um, remember when you go into a realtor's open house, like I teach, is your job is to add value. So when you go there, you're like, look, how can I help your open house? Today? That's almost the easiest line. So what I'm trying to coach you on is that's also the line on the follow-up. The okay. follow-up isn't about you. It's not like, oh, my gosh, how can I get a signing? Oh, my gosh, it was so good seeing you last weekend. Hey. By the way, is there anything I can do to help grow your business? Is there anything I can do maybe to help you promote your open house next week? Remember what I teach. Make it about them, not about you, and follow I up. I did, easy. yeah. So the reason people get held up on feeling nervous about following up is because your follow-ups are always about you. But if your follow-ups are never about you, you can follow up every single day. Does that make sense? Yes. So you can follow up as many times as you want as long as the messaging is there, which hopefully is authentic. Which is, mm -hmm. hey, it's so good seeing your open house week. If you're doing it again this week, what can I do? Like, shoot, can I Windex the windows for you? Like, yes. it's about them, right? And, and it, that's the follow-up. So the, my point is, follow as many times as you want, as long as the value's there, right? And But what I want to make sure is not lost is your win last week was in the doing, not getting the signings. Remember, this is a step-by-step -step journey, girl. Step-by-step. Too many step. signing agents see, the, see it as a loss. Well, they didn't call me back. They're not emailing me. The win is in the doing in the beginning, because the more you do it by default, sales is a numbers game, right? Too many new signing agents are like, well, I went to two open houses. No one called me back. I'm like, well, girl, you got to go to 10. Tell me what the numbers are. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're never going to bat a thousand, right? Batting a thousand is an employee mindset. You know, I don't teach that. You're a business owner. You understand that you got to maybe go to five or six yes, realtors sir. to get two or three to call you back. It don't have this unrealistic mindset of like, oh, I went to an uh, open house. They're going to call me back. I'm going to get business. This is a process. Okay. Got so you. Just trust the process. So go back as many times as you can, as long as you're trying to bring value, try to build their business. Because eventually if you, if every email sounds like, Hey, what can I do for your business? Eventually they're going to be like, dude, like, like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I, yes, right, you can right, help me, right? Right. Then they're going to be like, yo, what can I do for you? And you're like, well, that's crazy. You say that. Right, like I would love an introduction to your favorite title officer. Maybe I can be the signing agent on this closing whenever this house closes. So you can, it's easier to ask something. So 
get out of the me mindset mm -hmm. into the Absolutely. them mindset. And you can follow up as many times as you want. Got that you. makes sense. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm so proud of you. Like, honestly, Thank I want to you. start crying right now. Like, <laughs> I'm such a proud coach, girl, because most people won't do it scared. I Don't was... stop. I won't. I won't. I, I had to like <sighs> outside the door, and I just walked in. I was like, "Happy open house." That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and like, look, when when you when, and I'm gonna end with this is, I think marketing it gets you get more nervous when you market because you you're there to ask for something. Marketing becomes easier when you're there to bring value to somebody. So only reason you were nervous because you're like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna ask for something. Ask for something. Ask. Get out of your head." I need right. Like, right. Absolutely. That makes sense. So the mindset yes. changes to like, okay, let's figure out what I can do to help them. And that's almost your first sentence. It takes them off the defense. It's like, hey, I have you open house. Hey, I'm a local signing agent. I'm just trying to figure out how can I help you today? That's it. I'm not yes, here to sir. ask for anything. I'm just here to ask how I can help you help today. You. Mm -hmm. And then everything changes. Like, what can I do to help this open house today? Do you want me to post this on my Facebook page right now? Done. I did. I actually posted it on my Instagram story. They gave me their Instagram. I reposted their open house on my Instagram. And yeah. then make sure you tag them, them so they know you did. Did it. And then mm -hmm. make sure you slide. Make sure you go in their DMs and go, hey, so awesome meeting today. Looks like 50 people saw my post. I, so I, I can, uh, good luck. Anything else I can do? That's Call nice. Girl. Yeah, got you. Got you. Proud of you. Sticking. You. Thank you so keep, much. Keep building, girl. I will. All right, let's go. <laughs> uh, my biggest <laughs> takeaway from that conversation is, you know, when we make it less about us, marketing becomes easier. Look, here's the honest truth, and, and this might be tough to hear. The only reason you get nervous when you market is because it's about you. You internally feel guilty that you can go and ask somebody for something. Make it less about you and more about them, marketing becomes less intimidating. Let me say that one more time. Make it less about you. Stop thinking you're going in somewhere asking for an appointment. Walk in thinking, how can I help you today? The reason you get nervous, man, is because you make it about you. Stop. That's the coach in me. Stop. You're running the wrong route. You know what I mean? So keep building up someone else's business. And, and honestly, the sky's the limit, man. Let's go. All right. So who is next, my girl, uh, Christine, and then my girl, Steph. All right. <clears throat> I hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Mark Wills. I teach signing agents, notary publics, how to make money as signing agents. If you want more information about what I do, click the link in my bio. Let's go, Christine. What's up? <laughs> I don't know why there's always a delay. I was like stacking my papers, and then you're there. Oh, you're and I'm the signing at 5 o'clock, so it's perfect girl. timing. How are we doing? I'm good. I'm good. Things have been slow, though, so... Um, I have, and I know that I talked to you like earlier in January and I saw your whole, there was that whole training. I think it was last week where it's like, everybody was saying it's slow and I've checked in multiple times and everybody's like, we, we just haven't had anything like that. Escrow officers have been doing it themselves. And these are people that I've been working with regularly. So I know they're not like, you know, blowing me off or yeah. whatever. So, but here's the, here's a question I have. So in, in November, I went direct you know, in November, December, I'm going to stop you real quick. I'm going to stop you real quick. Two things. Okay. I need to get the business mindset. Correct. There's going to be down months. We have to stop using the word slow. Like that, that should never be in a business owner's mentality. It's like, there's going to be ebbs and flows. You Christine still think that every month should be busier than the previous month. You need to stop thinking like that. You're like, okay, okay. no business owner thinks like that. Do you okay. hear me on that? Like none, no, any successful business owner understands that you cannot have growth every single month. You can't. And if you're still thinking like that, I'm failing you as your coach. Like you're going to have months that are slow and you're going to have months that are busy. Look, you're, when you're in business long enough, you're going to have years that are slower and years that are busier. You're going to be like, oh man, remember back in 19, when 19, I did $60,000. Oh man, 2020 was a great year. I did 85. Oh, then in 2021, I did 63. That, that's just called business. So when yeah. we get out of the mindset of busy and slow, there's only two things. It's marketing or working. That's it. And so right. no, like, I, look, I, you I, slow month. Cool. Your clients are telling you that it's slow. Cool. Then what that tells me is you have time to dig wider, not deeper. So, Okay, cool. You know rates are going up. You're an educated signing agent. You know, I'm hoping you know this, 
that we are in 30 to 45 de day delays of loan applications. What was 30 and 45 days ago? I don't know, Christmas? So everybody was putting in less loan applications because of the holidays. So if the holidays were 30 or 45 days ago, it was never slow, it was cyclical. Yeah. So you gotta stop using the word slow. Stop, like honestly, Chris, stop everybody. All my loan <laughs> signing system students, stop using the word slow. The market is okay. cyclical. So okay. remember, December was holidays. Do you think homeowners mm -hmm. were thinking refinancing during the holidays? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're an educated signing agent, Christine, you know the loan application process is 30 to 45 days out from the loan application. Yeah. You should be thinking, what was 30 and 45 days ago? Holidays. Yeah. So like, it should naturally be slower. This market cycle should dip 30 and 45 days after the last holidays. Does that make sense? So, yes. so there should be like, there should be no panic. And honestly, this conversation should be like, Mark, you know what? Because I know loan applications take a little bit of a slowdown during the holidays. I know that January and February are going to be a little bit slower naturally because of the lack of applications in the middle of Thanksgiving and Christmas. Then mm -hmm. I've taken all of January and February and I've marketed a new title officers because my current title officer experienced the cycle, market cycle. And so that's given me an opportunity, Mark, to go to more networking events, to go to more open houses. But notice the word I used opportunity because mm -hmm. the slower times are opportunities to market that's mm -hmm. all i should be hearing from you mm -hmm. I, I you are such a good signing agent it's this the mindset it's like look this january's are naturally slower than december's because there are less applications in december mm -hmm. uh, like like people were traveling to their family holidays and not choosing to refinance yeah obviously so why yeah. are you surprised that 30 or 45 days after Thanksgiving to December 25th and New Year's, there was less applications. Yeah. Makes sense. So my, 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 my main question was about, because I was going direct so much in November and December, I didn't have time to take signing companies. And so I was responding to all the text messages, but I was denying them. So I'm thinking back to when, you, when I first started, which was last March, April, where you were like, take everything so that you get into the algorithm. So my question is, if I, I did that then and I was always getting tons of offers, and this isn't just January, like they've slowed down yeah. since I went direct. Yeah. So even in like November and December, they were like half as, as um, abundant as in October. Yeah. So do I need to start, if I want to get more business from signing companies again to fill the gaps, do I need to start accepting everything that comes in again to get back into the algorithm? Like you can fall out. Okay. That's yeah, kind of great. No, this, I'm is like, a, I fall out? this is a great <laughs> conversation. Hope everyone hears this. So the algorithms are a natural software program. So if the algorithms see you taking less appointments, it's going to think that you're a dormant profile. That should, and so my point is I want to give you kudos because you've connected the dots correctly. So okay. it, it's, it is, if you've done less settings for the last 30, 60, 90 days, the software is like, why would I keep sending this person notifications if I know she's not going to take them? Because all the algorithms are seeing is less activity or signing orders completed to be more specific with you. Okay. And so you've fallen out of favor with the algorithm solely because the software has noticed signing order completed has drastically dropped. They do not know if you have gone direct or if you went on vacation or you got out of the business. All okay. the algorithms know is the signing orders completed as a drop down. So they are making the decision that this person's probably out of the business for whatever reason. So you've fallen out of favor. So the short answer is yes, accept everything. The long answer is make some phone calls, girl. You're better than this. Be like, yo, yeah. call up the signing services you got business from six months ago. Yeah. Like, hey, this is Christine. I'm jumping back in the business. I'd love the opportunity to work with you again. Like you don't need to be like, hey, this is Christine. I went direct. Just be like, hey, this is Christine. I'm back in signings. I, uh, you know, used to work with me exclusively back in 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 April of last year. Whatever. Getting business yeah. from signing service, Christine's no different than business from direct. Pick up the phone. Let remind them that you used to be their go-to notary five months ago. They will be excited to have you back. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two. That makes sense. Dig wider. Like this is an opportunity for you to increase your clientele base. I coached okay. you and every single student. Rates are gonna be increasing over the next four quarters. 
Like I, I've coached this for the past six to eight months. What I don't want you doing, Christine, is telling me in six months from now, oh, my business has died down because you're not digging wider right now. Okay, okay. You need to be proactive, not reactive. Okay. The signing agents who are caught with their pants down in six months are not LSS students. I'm telling you that you can read the news. So yeah. the way you're going to make sure you're still making six, eight, ten grand in six months is by being more active. Now, this is opportunity to grow, right? Mm -hmm. When you have, when the market cycles are naturally depressed because of holidays, mm -hmm. you should be like, cool. This is now my opportunity to start introducing myself to more title offices. Because remember, when you're busy, you don't have that opportunity. That's why you have to look at marketing as opportunity. You have to look as downtime as opportunity. Okay. Does that make sense? So yeah. I am forewarning. It's not me. Read the news. Rates are mm -hmm. slowly going to increase. Home equity line of credits and cash outages are going to increase. So the mm -hmm. way you're going to increase your eight to 10 grand a month is by digging wider. Okay. But what I don't want for you, Christine, is six months. But hey, Mark, I'm like, girl, I told you six months ago this was going to happen. <laughs> All right. I promise. All yes. right. So call the signing service up. But remember, start digging wider. Okay. Take this time, this, this cyclical time to go to networking events, go to open houses, because you're an educated mm -hmm. signing agent who forecasts market trends. You forecast interest rate trends, everything I talked about. Okay. This, th between the two ears, Kay, you got this, girl. I got it. I got it. Thank you. I'll see you at conference. Right, let's go. Oh, you got a ticket? All right. Yes. Yes, I got a ticket. Oh, okay, so I'm sharing a hotel room with somebody, and sh I was like, I'll get it in a week or so because I can't afford to buy both at once. And she's like, she called me, and she's like, you, you better get a ticket. And I'm like, they don't open for an hour. She's like, no, they opened an hour ago for us, and you better get one. And I'm so glad that I talked to her because I bought one, and then like an hour later, it was sold out. So, yes, I will be there. I'm excited. Right, girl, keep doing what you're doing. Appreciate you so right. much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. I, I think the biggest takeaway from that is, you know, a, a good signing agent is proactive, not reactive. I talked about that last week. I'm going to talk about it again. Remember, what, whatever closing you're doing today originated 45 to 30 days ago. So if you're doing a signing today, you can think to yourself, this originated 30, meaning the borrower put in a loan application 30 to 45 days ago. What was 30 to 45 days ago? Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving. So the market cycle, the market trends will be less originations during the holidays. That should make logical sense to a business owner, which you are, and I'm speaking to you as such. And so January should be an opportunity to create new relationships, new, new uh, networking opportunities. Marketing is an opportunity that you need to take advantage of. Let's go. Uh, what a great, great, great day today. Okay, so I said Steph is next. And we're going to go Steph, Doc, Lourdes, and Sandy. <laughs> Stephanie, you are up. Hope everyone's enjoying today's coaching call. I am. I enjoy every day with you. I miss you today at 12, man. Hope everyone's crushing it. What else, Steph? Hi, what's up, Mark? A good guy. Looks like you're on a walk. I am I'm jealous. <laughs> I love exercise and you. getting some knowledge. That is my type of businesswoman. Okay. <laughs> uh, tell everybody where you're from and then let's rock. I am from Washington, PNW. Let's go. Um, this is the Northwest. PNW, yeah. Um... I need some help with like organizing my schedule okay. and being consistent with marketing because I actually enjoy the marketing now that I'm into it, but it's, I have, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm like psychologically doing this to myself, but I'll like plan something and then I'll it's like, oh, it's okay. I'll just do it tomorrow. Or, and I just like, I, I need some insight onto how I can like, well, girl, I, hit, I you know, what, know what I love is I heard like personal growth. I heard someone talk through what they know and you just need confirmation of it. But I think the latter is correct, right? I mean, you, I mean, look, marketing craze requires effort, you know, whether you're, you enjoy it or not, it's still like, all right, I got to get dressed. I got to do my hair. I got to put on makeup. I got to yeah. get out. So, you know, we're always going to naturally do things that make us uncomfortable that aren't easy. It's probably a better word. Right. And so I just think it takes recognizing it's like working out, right? You can all be like, Oh man, I just ate. I mm -hmm. can't work out. Oh man, I gotta go pick up my son. I'll just work out tomorrow. And so we naturally kind of create reasons and excuses uh, uh, to not do something. So I think you hit it on the head. So the solution though is Steph, time blocking. 
And, and okay. it's just like, look, what I tell students is look at your schedule and see where you're most free. Like, where do you not have to pick up the kids? When are you not doing date night, right? And just figure out in your schedule. Okay, cool. So that looks like Mondays from like 9 to 1030 are always open. Looks like Thursdays from 11 to 12 are always open. Whatever those in your calendar. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes just your part of your day. It's like you don't do anything else. Like one of your girlfriends are like, let's go for a walk. You're like, no. From 11 to 1, I have in my calendar marketing, right? Or one of your, one of your, you get it, maybe even you get a signing. It's like, look, 11 to one's my marketing direct days, right? And so time blocking is really the best efficient way of just, just buckling down to like, I'm doing it. The key is committing to your time blocking though, right? Because yeah. we can always allow things to creep. I'm like, oh, well, you know, maybe <laughs> I'll just pick up my child a little bit earlier. You better know, like I've dedicated 11 to one, my child's going to be fine at 1.30. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to pick up my child at 1.30 instead of letting that creep in. So the key to time blocking is just dedicating yourself and just be like, this is it. I'm doing I'm it. No, this is it. I'm doing it. it. <laughs> but I think it's okay. easier to do it when you look at your schedule and see the natural gaps. Okay. Right. And so you don't, cause, because you want the natural gaps because you don't want the excuse of like, Oh, I am, I always go on a walk with my girlfriend at this time. Right. It's like, no, by looking at my, my, the previous two or three weeks, I noticed Monday at eight 30 to nine 30 is always open. Mm -hmm. Now it's no longer open. I uh, But see, time block is key. Number two to marketing is consistency. So I would say a minimum of two days a week. So, you know, usually like a Tuesday, Thursday, a Monday, Wednesday. If you can do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, fine. But don't try to overcommit. Because when you overcommit, we tend to like be easier to make excuses not to do it. So don't necessarily overcommit. You know, two times a week, I think is probably an easy commitment. Time block, I'm proud of you so much. You're working, you're working the system, girl. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Cool. And thank you. Yes, that's that's gonna be really helpful. I think that's okay. Will be well, first awesome. of all, I am jealous thank of you. that beautiful background in <laughs> the Pacific Northwest. Look at that. Isn't Let's go. Out here? <laughs> all right, girl. You know I'm here if you need anything else and commit to your schedule. And that is the key. Let's keep building. All right. Thank you. Bye, bye. <laughs> bye. Um, my my favorite takeaway from that is is you know. A time blocking, but the key to time blocking and especially marketing, because we know marketing is a little bit uneasy, right? It's a little bit like, like it's, it's hard. It, it, it takes effort. And so what we want to do is when we time block, time block and parts of a schedule, we already know that's open. Because what we do sometimes is we'll time block on Wednesday, Friday, not realize that every Wednesday, you know, we always call, we always go on a walk with our girlfriend. So look at your schedule and see where the gaps are, because where the gaps are is your, uh, lessens your ability to make up excuses. Does that make sense? You want to give yourself the least amount of excuse making opportunity by trying to fit in your marketing times where you know your schedule will naturally permit it. Create the time block and commit to it, which is committed to your business. Let's go. All right. Uh, I'm going to go Sandy and then Lourdes. All right, Sandy, you're up. How's everybody doing? Let's go. What a great Monday. My name is Mark Wills, in case you're like, wow, who is this guy clapping all the time? Hi. Hi, I'm How Sandy. Hi, Sandy, talking to girl. Where are you from? And let's get into some coaching. I am in Thousand Oaks in California. Yes. In Ventura County. Love it. And I am coming to conference. Woo, you I, got a ticket. And I'm one of the ones that got in under the five minutes in the inner circle. <laughs> oh, you got an inner circle ticket. Oh, girl, those sold out in five minutes. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm I was so excited about hanging out with you. It's going to be really awesome. Got some surprises for you. I see people. Um, I'm, I'm really glad because those sold out and blew my mind, by the way. So thank you, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm honored. Just thank you. Thank you. Um, well, you know, it's funny because I was just going to do the um, the general admission. And then I was talking to my, my Bob about that. And he goes, no, what are, the, what are the options? So I told him, he says, go full on. So. Oh, I love it. There's nothing better than support. Tell them thank you. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, I just ordered my cards today, finally. I've been looking at lots of different sites. I didn't like any of the cards. And I remembered something you said, don't stress about your cards. It's not your card that gets you the business. But I still wanted something that I liked. Yes. Finally got that. And so it should be here in the next week or so. Um, but I wanted to ask you, in Ventura County, I know that you talk about there's a lot of people in different places, connect with them. Who's up here in my area? Yeah, I'll be honest with you, off the top of my head, I don't know, but are you in the uh, Facebook group for Southern California? I am. Okay, I would just make a post. If you want to tag me in that post, 
uh, so I can get a little bit of mojo going in there. Please don't hesitate. Okay. Um, but I would just make a post like who's in Thousand Oaks. Kim Sennett is our uh, ambassador, yeah. um, who, by the way, has a signing service. So you should definitely cozy up to her. Um, but also ask me, like, hey, Kim, do you know anyone in, in the Ventura area? Um, and see if she can connect you with anybody. But you 100% should be going out for coffee or something or, or trying to go over like loan definitions with someone locally. So um, yes, your head's yeah, in the right spot. Yeah, that's what I want to do. She just had uh, some kind of a gathering for Southern California, but it was down in um, Riverside or somewhere. Yeah. Way too far for me. She rotates them because she's kind of the SoCal ambassador. She does right. Riverside, Ventura, Orange County. She even goes as far as San Diego County. She's amazing. She'll travel all yeah. over. So just be patient. I'm waiting, and she'll... To, I'm waiting for her to yes. loop around closer yes. to me. Okay. The other thing that's really strange is how I even found out about this particular line of work is there's a woman who belongs to a Facebook group of that I belong to where we give away things for free instead of filling up the landfills. Yes. And she was telling me about it. And she says, well, if you get your commission, just let me know and I'll <clears throat> help you. So she's ghosted me. Oof. I've contacted her <laughs> numerous times and she will not respond. Yes. Period. End of conversation. Yes. So I don't know if it's because I also have a different side hustle that I'm doing really well with. And she also does that same side hustle, but I don't think she's as busy as I am. So maybe she feels that I'm going to steal her clients. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, my, my first, you know, th my first inclination is like, you know, it's really tough to get someone to do something for free, no matter where their heart is. But right? she offered, she shouldn't have just said anything. Th th I agree. I was getting to that no matter where their heart is, because they still need to take away from time from that side hustle or whatever. So uh, my point is that happens too often. It's kind of why I created my course five years ago because I wanted to solve that problem. I'm like, you pay me, so I will be here. And so, uh, you know, but I think a lot of times, you know, signing agents try to lean on people to do things. And I just think the head's in the wrong spot. Uh, but no, that's why you have me in the group. And Kim Sennett is her heart's as big as gold. So don't be afraid to reach out to Kim uh, locally. Uh, someone just posted the next one's going to be in San Bernardino. Uh, so you can make them. They're really great. They're really a lot of great uh, feedback in those groups. But here's what I'll tell you is, you know, just stick close with me in the Facebook group. Don't overthink, right? I mean, you have the five major signings. You should be doing mock signings with, I think you said, Bob. Um, make sure you do mock signings. That's probably the easiest way is, you know, if Bob or whoever, sisters, aunts, nephews, cousins, children, do mock signings with them. That's probably the best way to get comfortable. Um, and then kind of go back and forth with, with in the course, kind of figure out where you can use a little bit of tips. But my point is, I don't want you to overthink you need that one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, because I, did, I think it's us just being a little insecure as new signing agents. Because at the end of the day, remember, our job is not to be the loan officer. Right. So if you get to a loan document you don't understand, you just make a phone call. You know, I, I try to teach you the surface level of docs to make sure to expedite the signing appointment. But if you get to a, a piece of paper and you're like, I don't know. Just don't Ask overthink it. Yeah. P pick up the yeah. phone. So I think new signing agents feel like they need a little bit more handholding than they really do. Okay. And so my coaching on here is, you know, if you run into two or three forms, you don't know, literally make two or three phone calls. Let me tell you this as a new signing agent, the loan officer or signing service or escrow officer will appreciate the phone calls versus you guessing too many new signing agents feel like phone calls make them look uneducated and will less likely get them business. And the opposite is true. Right. It shows that you care and you want to do it right the first time. Yeah. That's my point. So yeah. don't overthink it. I don't think you really need as much one-on-one -on -one attention as you would like. I and now a, I get I that. I'm a little, I think I'm a little bit nervous because I've only done one right. uh, notary, notarization, just one. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've been contacting my acquaintances and people that I know from my <laughs> other side hustle and one of my contacts did actually write me back. She says, I have something that I need notarized and I don't need it for a couple of weeks. My husband's recovering from something. So contact me next week. So that'll be my number twos. I haven't done anything, but I don't want to go through and I, I might eventually, but I just want to go direct where I can go pick up the stuff and I don't have to have all these printers and spend all this extra money. I'm just going to get those cards and I'm going to go you know, look, I've already started looking them up in my area and I'll just go from door to door. I don't care if they say no, then I'll just, you know, keep following up and. I want to start crying. I love it all. <laughs> I mean, look, like I tell you constantly, the signing agent who makes the most money just tells the most people. We overthink this business, man. You're not going to bat a thousand percent. Every right. door you knock on won't be a yes. But if you knock on enough doors, you'll build a business. It's just literally that true. And I think a lot of times 
early signing agents overthink the process. Yeah. It's like, look, the more people who know you're a notary, the more likely you're going to get the business. It's a numbers game at that point, yeah. right? I even so, got the thing for my door. Girl, I'm proud the of you. magnet for my door. So let me ask you one quick question, then yeah. I'll let you go. I'm sure there's other people that want to talk. So when I'm filling out my journal, I did ask uh, another person about this, and I just want to make sure because it, it seems kind of weird to me, even though he said that's what you do. So if you're doing a loan signing and however many you're stamping, when you fill out your notary, your journal, it's one line per uh, document. So you, I will answer this from the standpoint, because I don't teach notary law or notary training. So I have to make sure I say that disclosure, always follow, always follow your state laws. Now, with that disclosure ahead uh, behind me, um, it, it's always best, in my opinion, to be overzealous. The more line items, the more signatures in your book, the more thorough your book is recorded, the better you're going to be if you ever get that 1% chance of oh, being called that's to That's not the problem. But I, my question is, if, if I'm doing a loan signing for yep. 150 how do I document that in my book if it's 15 per signature in California? That's you, you write 15 per signature, exactly what you do per line. Okay, so if it's 15 times however many, let's say there's just five. I know there's more than that. Right. I'm the assuming yes. I haven't done one yet. The, 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 the answer is yes. You put 15 in. The answer is yes. Okay, so then there's a differential. and that Yeah, but what happens is being else? a signing agent is that evens out at the end because there will be some loan docs that don't require two and there'll be some that require seven and it'll all even out. At the end of the day, you'll make more money in travel fees than you will in, in those uh, uh, notary journal entries because okay. you, well, Wells Fargo only needs three notarizations. You know, Sierra Pacific Mortgage needs six. So you'll There's eventually- Wells Fargo, right? I could walk to Wells yeah. Fargo from my house. I'm gonna end with this, okay? Thank you. The best kept secret for business generation are retail lenders. You walk into that Wells Fargo, you're gonna see a loan officer, there's gonna be no receptionist, there's gonna be a cubicle with a wide open door. Yeah, because there's a, there's a Wells Fargo and on the other side of the building is the uh, Bank of America. Go get them, girl. I cannot wait to follow your journey, let's go. Thank you for taking my call, Mark. Of thank course, you. you're welcome. I'll see you at conference, if not before on one of these. Bye. Okay, thank you, bye. You're welcome. I mean, my, my, uh, my biggest takeaway from that conversation is, you know, the end, which was retail banks are the best kept secret for business generation. You're going to walk into a bank, Wells Fargo, Bay, B of A, Chase, and you can see uh, probably a little placard that says loan officer. And then note you're not going to see? You're not going to see a receptionist. <laughs> you're going to see the loan officer banging on the keyboard. And that is your opportunity to let them know what amazing signing agent you are. So I got time for one more. Lourdes Perez, you are up. What a great day. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Mark Wills. I teach loan signing agents how to make money. If you want more information, simply tip that link in the, that the link in my bio. Um, Lourdes, you are up, girl. Let's try to get you on. Lourdes Perez, last but not least. So glad you're here. Um, I really think this is the best kept secret in real estate. Every single home where you live has to have a notary to close, period. Uh, the notary who tells the most people that they're a notary makes the most money. Oh, I don't know. Like every single business in America does. <laughs> like, I think sometimes it looks like Lourdes is not coming on. So I will um, wrap up with this. You know, I think a lot of times signing agents overthink this business. You know, I, we are like... I call you a business owner because that's what you are. You run a business. Don't ever forget that. And we have the same problem every business in America has. How do we tell people that we are open for business? Our business is easy. You walk into a title company, you walk into an open house, you walk into a networking event and meet a realtor. The signing agent who tells the most people makes the most money. So the number one key is understanding you got to push through those nerves. Our nerves will never go away, but if you can learn to push through those nerves, you will make a ton of money. If you understand that every single home has to have a notary close, you will see abundance because there is so much business out there. So what I need for you is I need you to believe in yourself because I believe in you. You are so amazing. Don't ever forget it. Stay relentless. And remember, I believe in you, but I just can't believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Have an amazing week. Let's go. Bye, everybody.